Okay, I'm back. So part two, <laughs> um, uh, let's, uh, uh, let's read the last two paragraphs um, for the second time. So uh, James is certainly capable of strikingly good writing. Um, so we're not saying that she's a bad writer, or at least the author is, isn't. Um, she takes immense trouble to provide her characters with convincing histories and passions. Her descriptive digressions are part of the pleasure of her books and give them dignity and weight. But, okay, so these are all the positives. It is equally true that they frequently interfere with the story. Uh, the patinas and aromas of a country kitchen receive more loving attention than does the plot itself. Uh, so here's where we have um, the author's opinion coming out right so previously the author was really just talking about what other people think about pd james but then here um we have the author's opinion which just like what other people are saying the author's opinion is actually mixed right so um it's not all positive um so that's something to keep in mind um likely we'll get questions about uh, what the author thinks about James. Um, okay, so uh, let's keep going. Her devices to advance the story. Um, so those would be like you know, plot devices, um, but you can just think of like ways to advance the story, right? And story has been equated with plot in the previous sentence, right? So um, that uh, her descriptive digressions interfere with the story and then here we have an example of a descriptive digression right talking about the Bettinas and Romans of a country kitchen um, and that that interferes with um, the plot in that like we're putting more attention or James rather is putting more attention on describing this kitchen than on um, moving the plot forward. Uh, okay. Uh, it's often impossible to see how her detective arrives at the truth. So um, hard to follow. Um, and then one is left to conclude that the detective solves crimes through intuition, um, which isn't really what we want detectives, you know, solving crimes by. And uh, typically with a crime story, the idea is that you're kind of on the same path as the detective right like you're seeing the clues in the story along the way and trying to figure out who did the crime right it's like a whodunit kind of structure um so uh yeah that's not a good thing and we know based on context that it's not a good thing as well right because the way that this paragraph is structured the author is talking about the good things about James's writing, and then this but here indicates contrast. So in contrast, here are all the negatives. Um, at this stage in her career, P.D. James seems to be less interested in the specifics of detection and in her character's vulnerabilities and perplexities. Um, so again, not a glowing review, um, if we think about P.D. James as a writer of detective fiction. Okay. Um, and then we have another contrast, right? So it goes positive to negative in the third paragraph. And now we're going to contrast what we just um, read. So it's going to go back to positive. However, once the rules of a chosen genre cramp creative thought, so um, once, yeah, the rules of detective fiction, you know, to use this example, right, the rules of detective fiction are kind of cramping uh, James's style in terms of her creativity uh, to go after these other ideas. Um, there is no reason why an able and interesting writer should accept them, right? So when the rules are giving you a hard time, 
there's no reason to accept those rules and follow them. Um, is what they're saying here. So in her latest book, there are signs that James is beginning to feel constrained by the crime novel genre. Um, now, does it, is the author going to tell us what those signs are? Um, here, her determination to leave areas of ambiguity in the solution of the crime and to distribute guilt among the murderer, victim, and bystanders points to a conscious rebellion. Yeah, so... These are the signs of constraint, right? So signs of rebelling against something. So signs that you're you're feeling um, constrained by something. You're feeling uh, sort of backed into a corner. And so you need to push back. And that's where the rebellion comes from. Um, it is fashionable, though reprehensible, for one writer to prescribe to another. Okay, so reprehensible, very, very bad, right? Fashionable is just, it's it's popular, right? It's um, trendy even. Um, reprehensible is um, that it's like worthy of being hated um, uh, and uh, like evil. You, um, you could think of as a synonym for reprehensible. Um, it's uh, something to be ashamed of. Um, but, <laughs> right? So um, saying like, we should, you know, it's this evil, horrible thing for one writer to prescribe to another. And so prescribe, right? You can think of like a prescription um, when a you know, doctor prescribes something. What they're saying is, you should take this, right? They're kind of giving you um, almost an order of, of what to do. Um, and so it's it's that should statement, right? Um, and yeah, saying like, it's this terrible thing to tell another writer what to do as a writer yourself. But, <laughs> right, so like everything before the but, we are giving it less weight now, right? So he's saying it's this horrible, horrible thing. However, um, so it's like the writer is about to do that thing, you know, that they are saying is so horrible. Um, but perhaps the time has come for P.D. James to slide out of her handcuffs and stride into the territory of the mainstream novel. So basically, the author now is telling James what to do, right? Telling James what she should do. Uh, which is like stop writing detective fiction and just walk out into this open space um, of the mainstream novel where you don't have to follow the prescriptions of a particular genre and just, you know, be free um, to write about what you seem to be actually interested in. Uh, yeah, so that's at like a much deeper view of the passage. Um, certainly takes a lot longer, right? Um, there are some things that, um, you know, some details that I picked up during this reading. But for myself, that first reading, I think, would be enough to go forward and answer the questions for the most part. Um, maybe some more specific ones I would want to check back to specific parts of the passage. Um, so my recommendation would be that you, you know, you do that kind of faster read through, um, see how that works, you know, go through the questions, um, answer them as best that you can, um, and understand that like that's what you're going to be able to do under time constraints. And then part of the review process when you're done with this passage would be actually not to check to see whether or not you got the right answers, right? So don't do what I'm doing here where I'm like checking my answers as I go. Um, but just, you know, wait until you've, you've completed that whole passage in a more uh, rough way but quick kind of way um, and then 
go back and do what we call like a blind review where you're reading through paragraph by paragraph a lot more closely. Um, if there are words that um, jump out at you that you don't understand, first try from context to guess at the very least whether it's positive or negative, okay? Um, and also try to guess if it's weak or strong language, right? Um, so like reprehensible is very strong negative, is a very strong negative, right? Um, so something something like that, right? Um, just to uh, to see if you can kind of orient yourself um uh toward what the author's opinion is is the author's opinion um mixed right as it is here or is it um you know sort of neutral like neutral and mixed are are different like the author here definitely has an opinion um up until paragraph three we could have said that the author was um like mostly neutral. There is this part about false opposition where uh, the author has like a negative view of the actual structures of like putting up these barriers between kinds of fiction. So it does seem that the author has quite a negative view of the constraints that are put on writers. Um, so, you know, that is flows through even from the first paragraph all to the last paragraph, right? That this, the writer of this passage doesn't like uh, the idea that that other writers have to stick within um, certain constraints uh, when they're creating uh, their work um, and they should be able to just kind of do what they're good at and uh, what they're actually interested in um, and then you know because of that probably aren't going to be like judged so harshly um, just for like not following the rules. Right. Um, so anyways, that's, um, uh, sorry, I got, <laughs> I got off on a tangent there. Um, uh, but, uh, but yeah, I like it. We're looking for the author's opinion. That's really what that tangent was about. Um, and so as you're going through, if there's vocabulary that you're not sure on, um, first, you know, guess at positive, negative, weak, strong. Um, and then I would check a thesaurus for words that could replace and see, you know, which of those words in the context of the passage would be a good replacement. Um, of course, you can look at the dictionary definition, but I do think that um, actually, you know, subbing in a replacement word and having a bit of like a word cloud of other words, and maybe in that list, there are other words that you're not familiar with, um, but that you can kind of get um, like a general sense of uh, how this word would fit uh, into the passage. Um, cause we're not really interested in just like a specific definition of a word. We're interested in what that word means in context, um, and how it's being used. Um, and like, that's, what's going to be ultimately useful to us when we're answering the questions and when we're trying to get an understanding of the passage on a few different levels. Um, so that will kind of uh, hopefully, you know, over time doing a lot of that, you know, blind review of going through again slowly. And then of course you would go through and answer the questions slowly. And at that stage, you would be looking for evidence for and against for the answers, right? Um, so if you're going to choose an answer, you have to make sure that you have evidence supporting it. Um, the evidence against some of the answers is going to simply be, you know, the passage doesn't say that, right? So it's going to be a, like a lack of evidence in favor of that answer. Uh, there are also going to be some answer choices where there 
incompatible with what the passage says. So it's not just like the passage didn't mention that, or that's not, you know, we don't know what the author thinks about this, but actually like, oh no, that's actually the opposite of what the author is saying. Um, you know, or the author, we have some evidence that suggests that the author wouldn't agree with that or um, that that's not the author's point. So uh, yeah, uh, try to go through. And I mean, that process is super, super slow, right? So that's kind of what I'm doing now is that like super slow process of going through. Um, and of course, that's not what you're going to be able to do on the exam, um, but it's going to help kind of fine tune those gut level responses um, that you uh, that you need to be having um, when you're kind of going uh, really fast uh, during the exam. Um, and you know, it takes takes a long time, takes a lot of practice. Um, if you have access to this exam, I'm guessing you probably have access to um, all the other ones on Law Hub, right? So uh, make sure that you're using these passages. Um, there are so, so many of them. So really, you know, put them to the best use possible. And um, it's not worth it to just go through quick, 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 uh, a bunch of different passages without reviewing them well. Uh, that's not going to help you improve, um, at least not significantly um if you know if reading comprehension is something that uh, you're struggling with so uh, it's really important to do that slow down uh, careful review okay i'm going to keep moving and i'm actually going to move through these questions uh fairly quickly so uh the author refers to patinas and aromas of a country kitchen most probably in order to do what and um we see here, this is like a negative about uh, James, right? So um, illustrate James's gift. No, it's not a positive. Highlight James's interest in rural society. Mm, that's not really um, really what we're doing either, right? right? We're not like highlighting that part. We're just showing that um, her descriptive digressions interfere, right? So it's it's a negative allow the reader to experience the pleasure of James's books. No, that's positive. Explain how James typically constructs her plots. Um, so not, not really, um, right? So it's more like how they interfere with the plot, not this part here isn't about the construction of the plot. It's about the lack of attention to constructing the plot because you're paying too much attention to the descriptions. So it's got to be E. Does E work, right? Exemplify. Yes, it's an example. An example of what? An example of James's preoccupation with descriptive writing. So yeah, James is preoccupied with this, distracted by it, right? Like when your attention is... Um, kind of on something that it's not supposed to be, we could say you're like preoccupied with that. Um, so E. The second paragraph serves primarily to do what? Um, okay, so we've got um, commentators. Uh, yeah, just like a lot about these different commentators. Um, uh, and some really positive and others negative, right? Uh, so let's see. Propose an alternative to two extreme opinions described earlier. No, we're continuing with some people say this extreme, some people say this other extreme. Present previously mentioned positions in greater detail. Yes, we're continuing with that, um, uh, that a uh, big distinction between exaggerating merits and castigating her as getting above herself, right? So I really like that one. Contradict an assertion cited previously. No, again, we're like really continuing on with that pattern of like, there are these two extreme opinions about James. Introducing a controversial interpretation. Nope, we're not introducing anything new there. Analyzing a dilemma in greater depth. 
Um, so I wouldn't think of this as like a dilemma or a problem um, that they're trying to analyze and solve, but rather just like describing um, the two groups of opinions. Um, so it's not so much like a dilemma between two choices, but um, just the fact that critics are uh, very ex like on two extremes about about this author. So uh, the previously mentioned musicians, yeah, greater detail. I would say this provides greater detail for sure, right? We even have some quotes and specific critics being named. The passage supports which one of the following statements about detective fiction? Uh, there are as many different detective novel conventions as there are writers of crime novels. Um, no, I think the conventions, there would be fewer conventions than writers, right? So it's not that like every writer kind of has their own conventions that are like different from one another. That would kind of be a more free situation than what the author describes about detective novels. So uh, yeah, I, I would disagree with this one. Uh, detective fiction has been characterized by extremely high literary quality. No, we actually have um, detective fiction being more lowbrow, right? Versus the highbrow stuff. So um, that uh, would not be supported. Detective fiction has been largely ignored by literary critics. Mm, no, it seems like there are definitely some people talking about it. So I, I, I don't think that uh, that's, um, that's supported. Uh, there's very little agreement among critics about the basic elements of a typical detective novel. Um, no, it seems like there is actually agreement among the critics about what a typical detective novel should be like. I mean, the author even seems to kind of agree with that, right? To, and basically saying P.D. James like isn't following those basics of a typical detective novel. And writers of detective fiction have customarily followed certain conventions in constructing their novels. Yes. So James is a bit of um, like an outlier or an exception to this. And that's why she's getting so much uh, critique over it. Um, but yeah, there are... Um, usually customarily traditionally um you know typically so what i'm doing there is that sort of word cloud thesaurus thing right um uh, writers of detective fiction um, have customarily followed certain conventions and yes that that is sort of the backdrop of of what we're looking at here the passage suggests that both uh, Wog and Oaks, oh, I'm so tempted to just like go and find out how to pronounce this name right now. <laughs> I'm I'm sure I'm mispronouncing it. Um, but yeah, feel free to comment <laughs> if you want to tell me what the correct pronunciation is. I'll probably look it up after I finish the video. Okay. Um, the passage suggests that uh, both Wog and Oaks uh, consider James's novels to have too much material that is extraneous to the solution of the crime. I like this, right? So too much material that's extraneous to the solution of the crime. Extra, too much extra stuff, right? Um, and so she's got like these characters, the construction of the characters is really detailed, elaborate settings, um, sense of place, love of abstractions, and like talking about all this other stuff, talking about, you know, describing the kitchen and such great, like all that stuff. It's like, that's not helping us solve the crime. So I think, yeah, too much that's um, so extraneous is like um, extra um, and extra in the sense that it's like not necessary. Okay, so extraneous, um, if that's, you know, that a kind of vocab word that you're not familiar with, would be a good one to uh, look at in a thesaurus and get that idea of it being 
um, yeah, like extra um, and not necessary. So I like A. Uh, too little characterization. No, characterization is uh, really, really good. That was what that, that noise meant. So uh, characterization is like an A plus, right? Her characters have convincing histories and passions. Um, they're painstakingly constructed. Um, so that's not the issue. Too few suspects to generate suspense. Um, this one isn't mentioned. Too simple a plot to hold the attention of the reader. Um, yeah, the simplicity of the plot or the how convoluted the plot is, um, is uh, so I would err more on the side of too convoluted, right? Because it's impossible to see how our detective arrives at the truth. Um, yeah, so I would I would go more with too convoluted, but is that what um, these critics? are um are saying right so i would agree that um this is like a criticism sorry that the author has uh but we're supposed to be focused on what wagon oaks think and they're talking about um you know get on with the the solution of the crime right get the handcuffs on the killer like you know, there's too much extra stuff, um, rather than it's too confusing, but just can we like get on with it? Uh, so I prefer a, I'm going to pause here as well, because that timer tells me I need to do something. So uh, yeah, I'll be back with a part three. <laughs>